This week we come to everyday evangelism. And when I think of the topic of evangelism, one of the verses that comes to my mind is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 to 16, where Peter says, In your hearts set apart Christ as Lord, always being prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. And I think for most of us, that's our heart's cry. I mean, we want to share the bad news and good news of Jesus with people, whether it's um, at a ball game, sitting next to somebody, you know, having a few moments to talk, or maybe when we're out connecting with one of the coaches on the field or uh, at work. Um, I think the bigger question for us is, how do we go about doing that? I mean, how do we actually begin to share our faith in Jesus Christ? Well, this week we're going to learn one of the most important concepts is understanding the gospel narrative. Creation, fall, redemption, and restoration. And this week we've asked Steve Timmis if he would to unpack that concept for us, and that'll help us in our discussion of everyday evangelism this week. If you're anything like me, you probably find evangelism quite difficult and, and sometimes quite daunting. And what we try to do in everyday church is to be as practical as possible so that we're not just talking about theory and, uh, and ideals, but to equip people to be able to engage with their, their neighbours, their friends, their colleagues at a, re at a reasonable and realistic, uh, a real life level. Um, and there are a number of things that we say uh, which we tr help to, to unpack this. First, first of all, every person has a story. In the book, we write about how every believer has a narrative or a story. And, and this principle extends to, to non-Christians as well. Every single person has a narrative which they use to interpret and make sense of life. And as a Christian, you're no different from them. And that's a, a great point of, of contact. And in chapter 5, we unpack how we as Christians who are part of God's story can begin to understand and connect with the stories of the people around us. Secondly, God's story is uh, summarized in the big themes of the Bible, which are creation, fall, redemption and consummation. I'm sure you're familiar with them. But here's, here's a very simple breakdown. We were created by a loving Father to enjoy and glorify Him forever. But we listened to the lies of Satan and we chose rebellion instead of obedience, which led to the fall and the collapse of that good life. But in Jesus, we have redemption because his death and resurrection reconcile us to the Father. And as the Father's redeemed people, we look forward to a future hope and a glorious consummation of his love in the new creation. Now, taking that as a, a very simple uh, basis of the story, um, we need to identify the gospel narratives all around us. Uh, because, in fact, every person lives according to their own gospel story. Everyone has an idea about what will save them. We all have our vision of the gospel. Either it's the true gospel bringing real life and hope, or it's a false gospel, which is eventually going to crack and, and disappoint because it just can't bear the weight that we expect it to carry. A few people are going to use the same labels, but every person has a vision for the way that they feel life should be, which is creation. Uh, a reason why their life is not that way, which we call fall. An idea about what it's going to take to make it better, redemption and a strong idea about what is going to make them happy, which we can call consummation. Think about a non-Christian that you know. Dig below the surface just a little bit, and their gospel story, what they depend on or what they want in order to be happy, begins to emerge. I know someone who has had a series of relationships throughout his life. Most have been relatively brief, and the relationship that this person is currently in is an unhappy relationship. But he openly talks about how it's a marriage for the sake of financial convenience. His life patterns and, and conversation reveal some things about his gospel story. You see, for him, being in a happy relationship is a key to a happy life. That's his creation story. And this has perpetually been thwarted for him because of his personality, which has led him to repeatedly choosing the wrong woman, which is fall. 
He's largely given up hope that things can get better, imagines that meeting the right woman is going to solve all of these problems, which is his story of redemption. And he thinks that the best he can do at the moment is to escape from his wife by spending time in the garden, going to football matches and, and pursuing other hobbies, which is consummation. Well, imagine the following comment, well, because this is a real one that he made. It's my Asperger's, you see. Since I've been diagnosed, I've found out that people with my condition often pick partners who are dysfunctional because they think that they can't deserve, they don't deserve any better. And that's what I've done all my life. You see, ask yourself what you'd say in response to that. It'd be helpful first to identify which part of the gospel narrative this man is talking about, namely the fall. He thinks that his syndrome is the main problem in his life. It's the thing that is present, preventing him from real happiness. And the point of intersection between this man's story and the Bible story is the fall. He can see something is wrong, but he's identified it as something outside of himself. But what he's looking for is redemption. And that's a real point of connection that you can make with him. He's looking for redemption. He's longing for something beyond himself, something outside of himself, because he's beginning to see that he can't actually deal with the problem of his life. Now, this is a particular example, but you will all be involved in relationships where people have their own story of creation for redemption consummation. You just need to listen to it. And that's why evangelism is as much about listening as it is about speaking. It's as much about giving people time so that you hear their life, you, you hear their cries, their, their, their complaints, so that you can bring the gospel to bear appropriately. So that you can, you're not just bringing some pre-packaged truth and you're just handing it to them and saying, okay, make of this what you will. No, you're showing how the gospel really does intersect onto their life and get to the core issues of, 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 of their brokenness. This is what everyday evangelism is. It's just evangelism that occurs in the everyday. It's not for the experts, it's not for the professionals, it's not even for those gifted as evangelists. It's for all of us as God's people. And this framework of gospel for redemption and consummation we think is a really helpful framework to help us engage with people in their everyday lives too. Now what Steve talked about is so vital. I mean, the more we understand the gospel narrative, creation, fall, redemption, restoration, the more we're going to be able to engage in gospel conversations, whether that's sitting here at a ball game, maybe talking to a friend at work, going to the gym, or even something as simple as taking a walk through the neighborhood. Let me ask you to take a few moments and just discuss this question. How often do your conversations incorporate the gospel? Let's get started that way, and we're going to have a great time this week.